What's going on, everybody? It is the Scene Snub here, and this is the 20-Minute Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mick Manhattan, and uh, this is the Monday Morning Bedhead Edition, because I am not feeling well. I didn't think I was even going to get an episode done, but, you know, when duty calls, when the fans want uh, what they want, and that's what I'm going for. So, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. First, I just want to say thank you to Back to the Media, who gave me this cool... uh, Hillbilly Jim signed poster from one of their events. Um, very awesome. Um, yeah, I got it. On, I got it at one of their uh, warehouse uh, sales, and so I shouldn't say they gave it to me, but I did. You know, they did save me one, and that was awesome of them. Uh, they got some very cool memorabilia that are located here in Winchester, Virginia. So go check them out. Lots of video games, movies, uh, music, the whole nine. So uh, back to the media. Check them out. So. Uh, <clears throat> to get started, I want to start with how amazing uh, the Becky Lynch segment and Shayna Baszler segment was on Raw. Now, Raw has really been amping up their game, and I'm so happy to see that because I would like to think that out of all the shows, Raw is the one that I latch on to the most. I remember watching it from its very first days when they were at Madison Square Garden back 26 years ago, 27 years ago now. But, uh,. And, and just really just being into uh, that show and then well, following through the Absolute Era, the Ruthless Aggression Era, the whole nine. Um, and then Raw has just been floundering for a while. And it's been sad to see. Um, I know SmackDown for a little while when I was on USA and in the beginning of Fox, it was kind of, you know, it was a little, doing a little bit better. But uh, Raw is finally kind of coming back around and I'm really enjoying it. I think Paul Heyman is doing a great job. But regardless of all that, I do want to talk about the Becky Lynch segment. So Becky Lynch, for a little while, have been, has been having some great matches with Asuka. But if we're being real, Be- the, the the edge that Becky Lynch had, that, that fire that she had, that stone-cold type feel to her that she had, um, it just hasn't been there. And it's it's been sad to see. Uh, because she was the man, and she was over, and she was the face of the company. And although I still think that she is, I think that um, the heat is sort of dying off of her a little bit. And uh, now I'm hearing rumors of she and Seth Rollins might go take a break. Uh, that's speculation now, you know, and, and nothing just being reported on. But, uh, you know, that's, that would be sad to see, too. Especially, you know, I know she's going to go strong until WrestleMania, but I don't know if the break is supposed to happen after. Now, Seth Rollins, I think he's a guy who can go away, come back, and he'll still be in the same position that he's in. I don't think he's that over. I don't think he's as over as he thinks he is. Or maybe Vince McMahon thinks he is. Um, I think there's a lot more talent that if he went away, like it would open up for them. Um, you know, even just for a little while. I'm not saying he has to lose a job or anything, but you know, he definitely won't. I mean, he is polarizing in the in the industry. But uh Becky Lynch, I think her going away would would lose a lot of heat on her, uh, like lose that attraction a little bit because, to me, she can build it up and she could be what Stone Cold was. That the reason you come back every week to watch. Um, so I'd hate to see her go and lose any type of steam in that way. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens there. But she did just have a great segment. Uh, you know, she had a great match against Asuka and Raw. And then she was ambushed by Shayna Baszler, came out and bit the back of her neck. Blood everywhere. Like, it, it was what we needed. Um, now, I know Vince came out months ago saying, oh, we don't need all that blood and guts crap. But, you know, fine. Say what you will. Paul's in charge now. You're sick in the XFL. That's great. I like the XFL, too. I might even do a podcast about the XFL. I think it's great. I'm glad it's back. I'm happy about it right now. Um, it's doing fantastic. I love the new rules. Um... So, Vince, you're doing a great job over at the XFL. But if that's taking you away from doing stuff at WWE, trust your guys and let them go. And bring back the blood and guts if you have to. Because I don't mind it on AEW. It doesn't need to be overtly done. It doesn't need to be crazy like it was back in the war days. But, you know, something like this segment where you get the blood. Shayna Baszler is now over um, as a heel. You have Becky over as a baby face. You have this rivalry set up that's going to go to uh, WrestleMania. It's just beautiful storytelling. Becky going away. Now, I mean, <laughs> the, steal, the grand larceny of stealing an ambulance and then coming back and then going back. And that was a little crazy. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. Uh, 
suspension of disbelief I can allow it in uh, in my mind my mind's eye um, because it was still awesome because it was very much reminiscent of what would happen back in the good old days of Raw um, during the war and that's I swear that's what we needed I mean if you I, I, I was just it was a really exciting time and um, you know I I think that you can take this to WrestleMania and beyond get a little edgier make Becky Lynch the edgier one your women's division when she's on top form is much better um, just look at SmackDown like Charlotte has to go to NXT for a challenge because they're not utilizing the women's division in SmackDown well enough so you might get some great matches but they're not utilizing it well enough it is just a fact but Raw is Raw is doing really good with it uh, so Hopefully, you know, one of them can, you know, balance it out or however it works. But then turn to NXT, who's doing amazing with their women's division. Uh, and we'll get to that when I talk about the NXT results from last night at TakeOver. But um, some great things going on. So uh, after Raw, Raw was a great episode. Like I said, we had a really solid episode of AEW this week. So just to kind of give you the highlights, uh, we still have um, Adam Page and Kenny Omega defeated SCU, uh, which I'm glad, and that turmoil that's going on with, within the Elite. Um, you know, it's going to lead to the Bucks for the championship, and I think that's when the Bucks will take it. But right now, it's just building up perfectly. Um, so I'm anxious to see where it goes. You have Dustin Rose versus Sammy Guevara, which is a good, solid match. You know, Nightmare Family versus the Inner Circle. You need those two, and uh, but you had uh, Rhodes win it. I'd like to see maybe Sammy Guevara get a little more heat on him, um, and you know win some more matches. Uh, he's a he's a solid small guy, you know. But you know, just let him let him go, let him win some, you know, put him over a little bit more. Uh, Britt Baker, uh, <laughs> perfect heel uh, promo. Um, even mentioned Whataburger in it. Um, it was it was a solid promo. Uh, you should check it out if you haven't. But, I mean, she's over, and she's going to be building up. And I think that's going to be solid because the next one, you had Nyla Rose defeating Rio for the championship. So now you got a powerhouse Nyla Rose winning the championship. Britt Baker coming on. You can get, some, uh, you can get a cool match out of that. So I'm anxious to see where that goes. Um, MJF defeating Jungle Boy. Uh, kind of a weird match. Now, now, not weird that it was a bad match or anything. Like, it was cool. It was kind of like a... MJF won, so it's kind of like his putting him over a little bit more. But, you know, I almost want MJF to not wrestle until Revolution. I almost want him to feel, like, you know, like put out the, the, the promos, you know, that he's above it all, whatever else. Like, you know, he, he doesn't have to wrestle all these peons. He has to wrestle Cody because Cody took the whipping. Um, I, I don't know. I thought that would have been a better play. But, yeah, whatever. He won a match. So, I mean, it still looks good for him. Um, and he's still the best deal in the business, in my opinion, right now. Um, you know, Cody took the week off, which I get because he's going to have a big steel cage match against Wardlow next week, so that's fine. Uh, they're playing it up with the whipping, but, you know, whatever. Um, but it was it still it was a cool little match uh, between Jungle Boy and MJF. Uh, and it, it gives Jungle Boy a little bit more of a push, too. Uh, and then we had the main event, Eye for an Eye match. Uh, <laughs> the Battle of Snake Pliskins, if you will. Uh, John Moxley versus Santana. Um, it's a cool match. It's a very solid match. Uh, weirdly enough, Santana gave sort of like a um, earlier in the night, they gave him like a babyface promo about his dad. Um, it wasn't bad at all, but it was just out of character for who he is. But uh, Moxley winning that match. So um, then we go to you know NXT was take oh, was a go home show. Got some cool stuff. Velveteen Dream. Um, and just building towards, you know, what happened last night in Portland. So, um, let's talk about that. So, this NXT Portland was just a terrific show. It was one of the best shows, uh, pay-per-views I've seen in a long time. And it, it's amazing to me that you can watch something that takes place in my old alma mater, Full Sail. Well, this was Portland, but they're from Full Sail. You, week to week, I mean, you can watch them at Full Sail. And they're putting on a solid, great show. Now they're going up against AW, which is putting on, in my opinion, a better show because you have you, you have more of a backing behind it and you have some really great star power. Um, it was almost like if NXT was on like Tuesday or Thursday, it would be 
brilliant. It'd be doing great. Um, but I understand in the head to head, uh, aspects like AW, even I go over to AW cause I think AW is more polarizing. Um, so you get, but you get a great pay-per-view and it's better than most of the pay-per-views I've seen from WWE main, main roster in a long time. Uh, and like war games was great last year. Every takeover lately has been really good. Um, but last night was truly a great takeover. So you had, uh, starting off, you had Keith Lee versus Dominic, uh, Dijakovic. Um, they're both the baby faces, both over, both doing really good. The battle of the big men, uh, it was a really solid match for the North America title. Keith Lee edging it out in the end, but man, did they put their bodies through it? Heck yeah. I'm trying not to curse on the show, but, uh, they were really, yeah, they put their bodies through hell. Let, let, let's give these guys their dues. Um, you know, just that they put themselves around and Keith Lee, man, for such a big dude, he gives big dudes like me, uh, hope that we can move around a little bit better than we, you know, some of us do, but it was an, it was an A plus match. It was, it was terrific. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, we had a street fight. So finally we got Tegan Knox and, uh, Dakota Kai, um, uh, in a match together since the war games miss out where Dakota Kai beat the crap out of her friend, Tegan Knox. You know, they really played it up. It was a great heel turn. Um, everything was just fantastic about it. And now we had them finally meeting in a match and it was a street fight. So, and it was really exciting and the right person won, in my opinion. Now, it's got nothing against Tegan Knox. She's just fine. But you needed Dakota Kai to win. You need, I don't think this is over by a long shot. I think it needs to keep going. I think you can pull it out few more months if you need to, even a WrestleMania if you have to. But um Dakota Kai defeating Knox's first round. You know, it could be a great comeback story for Tegan Knox in the end. And uh you know, so you know, we'll see what happens. I mean we had Raquel Gonzalez come out, um uh you know, uh, coming after Kai, so like we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know if they're going to build and go to something else. I hope they don't jump off storylines too quickly. That that would be a problem. That's where AEW is doing great. AEW is sticking with the storylines. They're cultivating to make them, drawing them out to the right amount. Like, and look, when did Cody and, it was uh, Full Gear right back in November, wasn't it? Where Cody and Jericho fought and then MJF gave him the low blow. And now we're in February. And at Revolution, we're finally going to get the resolution of MJF versus Cody. That's how you tell a story, and it's been interesting all throughout. You know, and, and I just, I, I hate to see it. At WWE and NXT, they love to kind of jump past storylines real quick. Like, oh, pay-per-view's over, let's go to the next one. And you just don't get any longevity out of it. Truly terrific match between two almost perfect, perfect uh, performers. You know, I like calling them wrestlers, but performers. Uh, Johnny Gargano versus Finn Balor. Um, this match, it was a, a while, it was a long match. It wasn't as long as the main event. The main event was like 33 minutes, but, um, Finn Balor wins it in the end and he wins in such a heel fashion, such a beautiful way. Gargano's clearly the baby face throughout Johnny wrestling. Um, there were chants going back and forth constantly because it was such a solid match going back and forth, back and forth. And I, I just, I loved every minute of it, you know. You got great submission moves. You got high flies. The whole nine. Uh, I, there was one point where uh, Gargano delivered a terrific through the ropes um, spear. Uh, you know, it just he looks perfect doing it. Uh, and I, I, you know, it was just fantastic. And Gargano comes back uh, later, but Balor did defeat Gargano this time. It was a terrific matchup. And we got my girl Rhea Ripley, the champion, going up against Bianca Belair. And I got to admit, when it was coming out, like, Bianca Belair's from that area. Her parents were in attendance. I thought this was going to be another, uh, like, when Naomi won in Orlando, her hometown. Like, I was like, oh, I think Bianca Belair's going to win this. And I could see sort of a comeback moment for, you know, Charlotte picking to go against Bianca Belair. But, no, they, you know, Ripley won it. And I was very happy about that. I want her to keep the title because I am... Because Charlotte Flair came out, took her out, ambushed uh, Ripley, and uh, announced that she's going up against her for the NXT title. Um, I really did not like the fact that uh, that Charlotte won the um, won uh, Royal Rumble, you know, because it was just like it's just been done a million times. Well, you had Becky Lynch again, 
They're going to add her three-way with Shannon Baszler. A lot of speculation. I did not expect her to go back to NXT. And she is. And if she wins and she brings a title and she's there for a while, I think she should. I think she needs to go back down because it is a main show now. It needs to be treated as such. And if she goes there, why not? You've won the titles in SmackDown. You've won the titles in Raw. Stay at NXT for a while. Dominate there. Uh, you know, uh, although I do, Rhea Ripley, I hope she wins. She, she's just fantastic. Um, and she gave a great match last night. Um, and so Bianca Belair. I don't want to take anything away from her. So, we got new tag team champions, NXT tag team champions, the Bru Broser Waits, uh, Pete Dunn and um, um, Matt Riddle, and finally teaming up, and they defeated Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish for uh, the NXT tag team champions, championships, uh, Undisputed Errors. So, Undisputed No More, maybe, because there's only one person in that whole stable that has a belt, so we shall see. I am very excited about that. Um, but it was very cool because you had such a fun lead up for the Broser weights, um, playing it up, like trying to get to Portland and doing all these things. If you haven't seen the vignettes, go check them out. They're probably online somewhere, but then just like, I think they're on a paddle boat, a swan paddle boat at one point, the car broke down, like just funny little, little blurbs, like of them trying to get to Portland and they, they played up the funny, but now they are the champions and I love it. And they earned that thing through the Dusty Rose Classic. So that's great. Whew, then we got the match in the night. And I'll tell you, I was watching with my seven-year-old. He loves Tommaso Ciampa. So we're sitting there. He's so excited. All he wants him to do is become champion. He's never lost it before. He's he is emotionally invested. And I was, you know, because he was, I was too. And I was so into this match. And they both these men for 33 minutes gave their all. And... It elicited the proper response they were going for, especially out of a seven-year-old boy, which is what you, you love to see, especially when you have kids and you were into wrestling. You love to see that. So uh, they're just trading back and forth, like to a point where at some points they couldn't even, they didn't even look like they were going to move. Uh, they were just done. We got a vicious, vicious bomb on the edge of the table. Where it looked like if played at the right angle, like uh, which they did not do, you know, with all the angles that they have, um, they did not play it at the right one. They hit the top of the back. Uh, Champa hit the top of his back, but if you played at the right angle, it looked like he hit his neck. And I mean, with his neck injuries putting him out, that could have really played up well. Like, but even at the top of the back, like he he sold this injury. It was truly fantastic. I, I loved every second of what they had going on in this match. And then you had, of course, the Undisputed Era come out. You had, um, um, oh, what am I, Roderick Strong on one side distracting. And then you had Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly come out, and they were uh, beating up on Ciampa. Ciampa get away, um, beats up Adam Cole. Uh, they take out the, uh, Ciampa by mistake takes out the, uh, the, what do you call it, the ref. So now they have more of a chance to go after him. Ciampa somehow gets away from it. And is about to win. Takes out Adam Cole with the belt. Um, you know, hits him the belt. Because that's what Adam Cole's going to do. He's going to have the belt. And he burst it. And he went back to go get the belt again. And there's Johnny Gargano. His partner in crime. The very last takeover. Um, he was holding the belt. Took away from him. And he's like, what do you want? Yeah. And then Gargano, in heel turn fashion knocks Tommaso Ciampa out and then he gets pinned one, two, three by, uh, Adam. Oh, so, um, Adam Cole. So it was a pretty emotional time. My seven year old was very upset. He was crying. He did not want to see that happen in Ciampa, but that's how, you know, you tell a good story. That's how, you know, you built it up right. And now they're going to go on to obviously Gargano and Ciampa. And I'm anxious to see how they do that and where it goes. So, just in true fashion, one of the best pay-per-views I've seen in a while. NXT TakeOver pay-per-views, which on a Sunday night, which is very rare. It's usually Saturdays. It was truly amazing to see them come out and do uh, a Sunday night. Because I think it did fantastic. I can't wait to see what the numbers were. Um, and I'm anxious to see where it goes from there. Maybe it will keep being on Sundays. Maybe they'll switch it on and off. Because I know they have Super Showdown this month. So we'll see what happens. But until that time, I think that the best pay-per-views have either been by... Monthly, the best pay-per-views have been by NXT. Um, 
and that's only because AEW puts them out once every four months. Uh, AEW right now is dominating the pay-per-view game, which we'll talk about more in the future. I want to have a whole segment on this. Um, but NXT is definitely nipping on his heels because NXT is putting out some great stuff. And then you have the main roster really not doing much. So, you know, we'll see how they do or what happens. Uh, Raw is getting good, but let's see if they can fix the pay-per-views up a little bit. So, with that, this has been a 20-minute wrestling podcast. I hope you enjoyed the kind of retrospect of the week. Uh, I did want to get into a few things. Maybe next week I'll talk about it some more, and that is replacing The Undertaker. Just some thoughts on, on WrestleMania. Just some thoughts I had, things like that, and some news about John Cena. I'm sure you saw it on SmackDown. Um, and Goldberg is coming back. He's going to do it. So I have some stuff I want to speculate on. Uh, I'll talk about that next episode. Uh, we do, and also we have Superstar Showdown coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'm probably going to do something for that. Um, but until next time, make sure you're giving us a like and subscribe and hit that notification buttons because we are always putting out content. We have tons of shows, seven shows right now, soon to be nine. It's going to be great. Uh, very exciting, very, very exciting stuff going on. Um, I just did on the Scene Sounds podcast an interview with Rod, uh, Rodman Flinder. He Go check that out. He's a great guy. He was director of Idle Hands, The Unborn, uh, Leprechaun 2, and he just directed a new movie called Eat Brains Love. Love for you to check that out. Uh, it's fantastic. So if you love movies, go check that out. Um, wrestling, um, again, I'm a little sick, you know, so bear with me. Sorry. Um, uh, for wrestling, I'm going to be doing more uh, panels. I might have some guys back. Uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, I, I think I'm going to do something before AEW. Not sure yet, but we'll play it out. We'll see how I feel. Um, with all that being said, go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Scene Snob. Uh, the Scene Snob channel on YouTube, uh, SoundCloud. We're on Spotify, everything. So thank you for listening. I uh, hope you enjoy what we had to talk about, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.